Is Pakistan stealing India's wheat? According to Afghanistan, yes. Not only is Pakistan stealing India's wheat, it appears Pakistan has been sending substandard wheat to Afghanistan. This is just one in a series of events that have happened in the recent past. And I want you to take a look at the whole thing before we come up with some sort of a big picture. Here we go. So here is a tweet from a very respected journalist, Aditya Rajkaul, who has essentially translated a tweet that has been given out or put out by Afghanistan, wherein they are saying that Pakistan has been stealing wheat that was intended for Afghanistan from India. Remember that this has to go on a road route. And this has been a challenge for India that Pakistan tries to put unnecessary curbs. They, in fact, wanted India to give it to them so that they could, in turn, give it to Afghanistan. Probably sticker diplomacy that they could say, you know, sent with love from Pakistan. And if you scratch it off behind that, you'll see it was sent with love from India. So that is just one particular incident. I also want to show you that this was one of the things that was happening. The other thing that's interesting is India recently signed a deal with um, UAE. It's called CEPA that was signed on 1st of May. And what they agreed was that UAE would not export or re-export India's wheat and, and a series of products, soft wheat, durum wheat and, and wheat flour and so on and so forth. So one wonders to which country UAE was re-exporting what it had imported from India. So now India has a curbed its exports. They've kind of put a pause on the amount of exports of wheat. The reason being that I think India is realizing that it might need all the wheat that it produces for its own consumption. It had something to do with, I think, Sri Lanka also, because now India is supplying Sri Lanka with a fair amount of wheat and other supplies, including uh, oil, uh, uh, gasoline. And uh, so so, the, so the, the, there is this interesting play. Who do you think UAE was re-exporting wheat to? Well, your guess is as good as mine, but here is another interesting thing that's going on. Supposing somebody wants to stop India or somebody, somebody wants to stop the world from importing wheat from India. What do you do? You reject one consignment, say that it has a flaw. Is that what Turkey did? Well, recently again, and I'm going to give you all the references so you can go and read all the stories in the description section. What has happened is Turkey has rejected close to 50,000 uh, tons of wheat shipment, saying that it was infected with rubella's disease. Now, just a quick take on what is rubella's disease. Rubella's disease is also called as German measles. It gives red spots on the body and it is considered to be something that is not good for people. Uh, some people may have mild symptoms. Some people may have fever up to three days. However, if it was indeed carrying the, uh, that rubella's disease signature, then when it came back to India, it came back to Kandla after a few weeks, the Indian government should have tested it and have put out a press announcement, whether it was true or not, whether there has been some kind of a correction made. This is where India fails in its communication. If they had done that, then this would have had no impact on its exports to other countries. It appears as though the exports to other countries is going on fine because you know, each country is going to have its own agricultural inspection process. In fact, even as I travel from India to US, I have to declare a statement saying I'm not bringing in any plants, vegetables or food uh, in. I mean, I'm, I'm supposed to have only processed food, something that is, you know, that will be, you know, packaged and so on and so forth that they will allow, but not, you know, uh, cooked food or plants or vegetables and so on and so forth. Even flowers, it has to come through the normal route. But there's a pro process for this. So all this is happening are Turkey and Pakistan working together? Uh, you know, there is an access that has formed between the two of them along with other people. Now, it is possible that this particular consignment was indeed uh, infected with rubella's disease or it might not have been possible. However, the clarification has to come from the Indian government. Now, it's also possible that Indian government may have said, okay, we know that this is not filled with rubella's, this is not infected with rubella's disease. It's possible that Turkey has a flawed inspection procedure and it is possible that they said, 
okay, wait a minute, other countries are not complaining. So why is it that we should be worried about this? So there are some diplomatic wheels within wheels going on. So we wouldn't know what happened, but I think India's export juggernaut was going along fine until India took a pause, put a pause. And now I think India might reevaluate it after perhaps the monsoon, because then if the monsoon is good, then they know the harvest will be good. So maybe they can uh, give up some of their reserves for the world. We don't know. Unfortunately, if the farmers law, laws had been passed, this thing would have been a much more market driven process and the farmer would have benefited immensely. Thanks for watching. Please like, share and subscribe to our channel and don't forget to click on the bell button for notifications. Namaskar.